Psalm 132, A Song of Ascents. Remember, O Lord, in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath, from which he will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons also forever shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation, and her saints will shout for joy. There I will make a horn to sprout for David. I have prepared a lamb for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but on him his crown will shine. This psalm is a plea for God to fulfill his ancient covenant promises to his people, particularly the twin promises forming the center of the covenant, promise of God's presence and of God's king. God's presence is captured in the temple language permeating this psalm, and his chosen king is reflected in the words concerning David and his sons. Perhaps such promises seem irrelevant to your life, but consider what they might mean for you. God was present in Eden, yet withdrew his presence when mankind fell. Ever since then, he has been working to restore his presence, an insurmountable task if left to us sinners. But God himself provided a tabernacle, and then a temple, and then his own son. In each case, he was working toward the restoration and expansion of Eden, bringing the light of his presence into this sad and dark world. And now we, you and I, are the very temple of God in which he dwells. God's presence means you have God. He is with you. He is, by virtue of your union with Christ and the indwelling Spirit, in you. You are never alone. You have an ever-present friend. And because God took it upon himself to fulfill the promise of a Davidic king, this abiding presence will never leave us. Throughout the Old Testament, God called on David and his heirs to follow and obey God. But they were infected with the same problem the rest of humanity is plagued by, sin. Yet God sent a king who was not only a son of David, but also God's own son. He sent Jesus to love you, to lead you. Who rules over your life? Who will determine the final state of the world? Who gets the last say? Jesus Christ. Not your boss, not your parents, not your political leadership. Trust him and be at peace. Thank you.